How we all doing? Is it a hey ya, hallelujah kind of day? All right, right? Because if not, then my goal is by the end of the service we have you saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. All right, that's why anytime, just shout it out. Uh, how about this one? This is the day. What are we going to do? All right. Well, what if everything's not perfect? It's not sunny out. We can still rejoice. Uh, we're going to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Anybody else sing the song in their head? Rejoice, rejoice. Okay. Okay. All right, man, now I know we're ready. I'm in the right place, because I was worried there. I saw some people got a haircut, and uh, some people told me that was a sign of the second coming. Not you, Sonny, you're, you're Samson. You get your haircut, and yeah, it's done. But now we, well, I'll let you figure out who the one is. We're just going to leave it out there. But you at home, we thank you so much for joining us. Um, we know that sometimes uh, things don't work out where you can't be here, or maybe that's your preference way of uh, joining us. But again, you are just as much with us. The Spirit is just as much with you. And this is Communion Sunday, everybody. Can you believe it's August already? Yeah, I know. What happened? But as our tradition is, on the first Sunday of the month, we like to have communion. So if you're at home, we'd welcome you to get some bread and some juice, and we'll be having communion later. And again, it's just as much, just as if you were here God is not limited by time and space. If you're not even here right this time, we're feeling Maybe you're watching it later. Most people do. God is beyond time and, time and space. And I would say this to you. It's an ordained meeting. God has this time for you. So uh, uh, I know it's just temptation to click off and go somewhere else uh, while you're on Facebook there and all that. But I would challenge you. Uh, we have a message, I believe, that's going to change your life today. Um, so, yeah, so let's check it out. Um, but before then, um, we want to get our announcements out of the way because we had a big day here at church yesterday. Ministry was taking place on a Saturday. Diane, can you tell me more about it? Um, let's, is the microphone on? Oh, uh, yeah. let's, we're going to stall. We're going to wait for the... We're going to wait. There okay. It is. Okay. When am I going to learn to trust God more? Two After or three the sermon. Weeks. Two or three weeks ago, I thought, oh, we don't have enough stuff for the backpack oh, no. ministry. And then you guys just blew me away. Didn't surprise God, blew me away. And we had more than we needed. Um, we had happy families come in yesterday and take all the things that they needed. And we still had more than we, we didn't run out of anything important. We ran out of two little tiny things, but nothing important. So thank you so much for your generosity. We still have all of the um, items on a table back in one of the Sunday school rooms near the chapel. So if you know of anyone that still needs anything, we'll keep them out till about the time school starts around Labor Day. I'll put them then away till next year. But thank you so much, especially to the helpers that came out on Friday when it was pouring. Cindy, Cindy's not Some here yet. Some people got wet. Um, Cindy came in with, during the pouring rain. I got here before it, it, the downpour. Um, Oh, and, and Alice went back out to her car in the downpour for a key that was already here she in the shrunk. building that I forgot about. Um, so thank you to the, to the people that helped on Friday when it was really hot and that came and gave their, their yesterday yeah. morning. The families appreciated it. I appreciated it. Thank you so very, very much. Yes, yes. And thank you for being the uh, lead project on it. That always helps when we have somebody to lead it. And, um, you know, I'm just going to call it... Um, now, again, when God did the fishes and loaves, I mean, that was something else involved. But again, it was the same problem. There's not enough. And it had the same result. God was glorified. And how much was left over? An abundance. So when we trust in God, he's not a God of scarcity. He's a God of abundance. He's a God that um, gives through all different things. So when we worry, and again, there, there might be a verse or two about worry, but, you know, We'll get there. And we're in there. We're all in a progress, amen? We're all under construction. God's working on all of us. We're better than we were. Um, sometimes we slip back, but uh, we're yielding to God. And so, God, uh, we appreciate you. We thank you for the blessings yesterday. We'd ask, even though they received uh, 
backpacks, lunch boxes, and paper. We know, Lord, the real uh, goal was to bless them, to let them know that they're loved, to let them know that Jesus can make a difference in their life. Lord, we trust it. It looked like with the smiles on their faces that they were met with love and respect and dignity. And uh, Lord, we just hope that the light that we had, that you gave us, that they received it and they'll never forget it and they'll carry that wherever they go. We ask this in God's name, Jesus' name, amen. All right, again, thank you very much. Uh, we want to get right into worship. Is that uh, any objections? All right, because forever hold your peace now because we're about to worship God. And if you're not ready to worship God, then we'll figure out what's going on. Uh, maybe you need to um, ask for forgiveness. Nah, we won't do that. We'll just do that in a private way. But anyway, I'm ready to worship God. Are you ready to worship God? Yeah. All right, well, we've been using a video to worship God. Joanne's been coming up with some great videos. And uh, we appreciate all that Joanne does. The graphics are phenomenal, and uh, the music is awesome, and we thank the band for that too and all that. So again, let's begin worship with this video. As Christians, we have no need to worry. We are called to seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. The Bible says, don't worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are we not much more valuable than the birds? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet God still dresses them in splendor. If that is how God dresses the grass of the field, will he not clothe us as well? We need to trust God. Do not worry about tomorrow, for each day has enough trouble of its own. Worrying won't add a single hour to our lives. Our God knows what we need. If we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all of these things will be given to us as well. Trust, don't worry. If you're able, would you please stand and join in the call to worship. Happy are those who follow the ways of the Lord. Those who follow God's ways are continually nourished in faith. Come, let us open our hearts to God's compassionate love. Our opening song is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, number 64 in the hymnal.
Let us pray. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, you are worthy of our praise and worship of you, not only this day, but every day. We are here to meet with you. We want to hear from you and sense your presence in this place. Thank you that you desire to be with, here with us. May we show our love and thankfulness to you as we receive your love in return. Reassure us that you are always a part of our lives and may we live our lives according to your word and ways. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. All right, well, today um, I might need your uh, patience. Do we have any patience out there? All right, and big supply. Uh, and I'm going to Bev's here today because uh, Bev has always taught me for the kids movement, it may go well, and it very well might not. Um, I got this in the mail. Yeah, do you know what this is? I'm not sure either. Karen thinks she knows what it is. She ordered something and we both laughed because when she told me what she ordered and we received this, we're like, ain't no way. But she said, yeah, yeah, it's a vacuum packed. And uh, we're gonna try it. I don't know what's gonna happen because obviously I can't try this and then see if it'll work or not and then redo it. But um, so I'm gonna start. But the message I want for the kids is this is small, maybe, right? Can it get bigger? Do we always start with small? Were you smaller before? I remember when you were smaller and you're getting real big now, right? He's got, he's got, so you're getting bigger now, right? And, and they were all, do you believe it? They were all small ones too? Yeah, yeah. And they all got bigger too, didn't they? Yeah. So that's part of life. And God says he wants us to um, just believe in him, just to trust in him in a small way. And it says if you do it in a small way, like a mustard seed, that maybe it'll grow. Oh boy, I don't know. I don't think it's gonna work, Karen. Oh, it's got another bag, all right. A bag in a bag, did you ever get a gift like that? So, so let's see what happens. I better get it out of here before it uh, gets too big on me, huh? So, I'm so glad you came today. I'm gonna come down there with you, okay? And let's see what happens. Because with God, something can start out small and maybe it gets bigger. What do you think? Let's see here. Oh, okay. Oh, uh. Karen. You want to try it? All right. All right. Well, here's what we're going to do. You don't have to sit here. Why don't you, you want to get up? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to you right here. How's that? Or do you want it? You want it right here, or do you want it on the floor? Okay, all right. Well, I want you, and if I'm not, look. Emmett, do you remember what we told you? We were studying the Bible, and we found out what your name means in the Bible. Emmett is in the Bible, and if I'm not mistaken, because my brain's not that good, it means truth. And so every time I see you, Emmett, I think of truth, and the truth is, God doesn't care where, doesn't care how big. He just wants us to give it to him, and he will grow it. He wants our faith, even if it's small, and he's gonna grow it. Just like he grew all of us to get bigger and bigger, and he's going to grow you to be bigger and bigger. He wants to take our faith. We can start with small. I say, well, I only have a little faith. God says, I'll take your little faith. I'll take your little bit of trust. And if you give it to me and you believe me, I'm going to grow that like a seed that we put in the ground. And that little seed's going to grow into a big tree. Do you ever see a big tree? Can you imagine all those big trees? Started with a little seed. 
That's amazing. But to me, that shows me what God can do. If God can do that with a little seed, can you imagine what God can do with my faith? Yeah, he's going to grow it. So let's pray. God, thank you for things that come in the mail. Thank you that you can give us ideas that can make us chuckle, but really that they show us a biblical truth that points us to you, that helps us into our faith. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit who lets us see these things because not everyone does see them things. We thank you for our children. They are precious in your sight and they are a blessing to us. Thank you, Lord, that um, their faith will continue to grow and grow and that we will help in that growth and we will pray for him and them that their faith will grow. Help us to provide the opportunities and the materials and the lessons for them to grow. But Lord, we know it won't grow unless you're present. So Lord, we invite you here with us. Help us all to grow in our faith. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, there's Junior Church. But I don't know if you, if you want to take your couch with you. That's okay with me. Or you can leave your couch here. That's your decision, okay? What do you want to do? You want to go to Junior Church? Okay. Um, there's a couch available. <laughs> if they buy, uh, so, you know, let me just, this is going to bother me, so I got I to gotta get that out of there. Don't look over there. Okay. Yeah, I know. So somebody's going like, that is driving me crazy. And, and if it is, just sneak up there and just take it away, because I get it. We want things. This is, this is the place of worship. So, but, uh, so anyway, um, here's the kids' moment for all of us. We are on a summer retreat. We're doing a reset. A lot of these things are things we heard before, but maybe again in this summer as um, maybe a different opportunities, different schedule maybe, that we um, go over some things and maybe um, it comes at us in a different way. Today, um, again, I want to go back to, um, well, let's just look at this. Is life amazing? Yeah, yeah, son, you would say it's amazing? Is it easy? All right, Chuck, is life amazing? Is it easy? Okay. If Chuck says life's easy, I gotta rethink my life. <laughs> Paul, can you hear us or are you? All right. Paul, is life easy? Not always. Okay. <laughs> but is it amazing? Yes. Okay, so everyone we could ask a lot of people, and, and I think that's the important thing. God has an amazing life for us. It is amazing. But let's not throw it out the window just because life isn't always easy. Jesus said, in this world. You will have trials and tribulations. He told us right about it. All the disciples, his followers, had tough times. Yet in our world, we want things to be easy and nice. And we were, you were never promised a rose garden. Is that how it goes? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. No. no. You're doing it yourself in your head. That's how messed up we are. Um, but anyway, uh, we want to do a reset because... Um, Life is amazing, but Jesus said, it, there will be trouble, but I've overcome the world. What I need you to do is, you're not going to understand it. There's going to be people that get cancer, and we're going to be angry, and you have a right to be angry about it. That's not fair. There's going to be babies that die, and, and we're going to be like, why God? And there's going to be a million other hard things that happen that we are like, really, God? Really? I'm your disciple. And he's going to say, trust me. You're not going to understand, but I need you to trust me. Okay? And I know we've talked about this before, but I always like to keep coming back to this because I know for myself, I wouldn't preach nothing to you that I don't need to hear myself. And I need to hear this again this week because um, me and God were butting heads and doing some stuff, and, and I'm in a good place now. Um, but earlier in the week, uh, me and God were um, discussing things. We'll just put it nicely, but... Uh, 
little, little sissy Pastor Ed wasn't happy with uh, everything the way life has dealt to him, you know, and oh, in my little privileged world, uh, I wanted the sun to be shining and everything to be a little perfect, you know what? And God said, oh, Pastor Ed, I need you to put on your big boy pants and go preach the word. Uh, can you do that? So this one's for you, God, okay? So, uh, but again, we joke and we kid, but it's for real. Um, and, and it's important um, because this is, again, a lesson that I think we don't get, trusting God. And um, many things will never make sense to us. Um, what should we do? We try to figure it out, but are we called to figure it out? Are we called to understand God? Yeah, good luck with that. He's God. I'm not. I'm the creation. Can the clay pot ever understand the, what do we call them? The potterer? -er? Okay. Um, you know, and, and when the potterer's pushing in and trying to create this lump of clay into something that it's not yet, he's got to push. And, and then I might get out of shape. And then he's got to, and, and then we, and I resist because I'm clay. But God's saying, I'm going to shape you to be like me. And that's going to take some work. Um, and it's going to take a lot of trust. And um, as we often say, we got trust issues. Because we've um, trusted people. And people are people. They let us down. But God is not going to let us down. Um, and again, I don't ever want to sound um, frivolous with this. Because again, we're dealing with some serious things, like I say, like people dying. It's things that seem unfair. And they are. Let's call it what it is. But what's the answer? People are going to get cancer whether God is in their life or not. If I'm going to get cancer, I want God in my life. Because I'd rather do cancer with God than without God. And, and I'm going to trust him. Um, life's unpredictable. We don't know even what today holds. I remember waking up on September 11th. And it was a beautiful day in 2001, I believe. Beautiful day. And I was even outside saying, like, praise God, what a beautiful day. And we knew what happened in a few hours. So we don't know what today holds or tomorrow holds. We, and again, I don't want to be a doomsday guy. It's going to be an amazing life. And God has a plan for you. And part of the excitement of your Christian life is figuring out the plan that God has for us. Um, but we don't know what tomorrow holds. We're going to have disappointments. We're going to have dreams that are broken. We're going to have heartache. That is the human experience in this imperfect world that is marred by sin. Yet in the midst of it all, um, did you ever see a tapestry? Um, a woven picture, it looks beautiful. Um, did you ever see on the other side? Um, that piece of artwork, it looks so nice on one side. On the other side, it's got a lot of knots, a lot of frayed ends. And I'm sure when they're weaving it, oh, every once in a while we got to put some dark black in there because that's part of the picture, some dark. When Karen does her artwork, she does it, and you'll see her like paint. She'll then later go by and draw black around it to bring out the colors. So sometimes God will allow in our life some dark moments that bring out the other good times. We need to have a comparison. We need to have relativity. If you lived in a perfect bubble all the time, you wouldn't know what's good. You would take it all for granted. Um, so it's, there's a tapestry. There's threads of life. Every day is another thread that God's weaving in our life, and he's making a beautiful tapestry, uh, one way to look at it. Um, trusting God means that he's believing, uh, we're going to call Romans 8.28 here, it means trusting that he's working all things together for good for those who love him and are called to his purpose. So there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. It doesn't mean God caused it, but he's going to use it all for good. And I know we talk about this a lot because, again, I, this and a few other things are key principles that I think we got to keep remembering. Um, God is meticulously, he's like an orchestra leader. And there's all kinds of people playing instruments. He's making everything work together so it sounds beautiful. Uh, we have the choir practice coming up. It's not a bunch of solos. It's a bunch of people working together 
on their own does, how's the bass guy sound? Well, he sounds all right, but it's so much better with all the other things. And that's how your life can be. Sometimes um, it's a little rough, but with everything else, it's a beautiful song. Um, the Bible tells us, and this is our verse for the day, um, and this is one you want to memorize. I'm, um, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And, and every word of this one, don't cheat this one with uh, just paraphrasing it. Trust in the Lord. Now, a lot of these we talk about, a lot of us are trusting in our 401k. Some of y'all are crazy enough to trust in the government. I'm not saying don't, you know, but what level? Some of us are asking the government to solve all of our problems. Some of the times it's causing the problems. And I'm not anti-government. God created government. Okay, we can talk about that. But what are you trusting in? Your 401k? Your employer? And we saw how COVID dealt with all that. All the things we were trusting in, gone. What's left? Trusting God. I wish there was a song. Trust in the Lord with what? All right, come on, let's be reasonable. 90%. Can we do 90%, God? Do I hear 90? No. He put that stinking three-letter word in there. All. Trust in the Lord, not with some, not with most, not with, you know, whenever it's convenient, not when I agree, not when the sun is shining, not when we're all healthy. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and what? This is the problem. This is us. I lean on my own understanding. But he's telling me, no, trust in me and lean not on your own understanding. And guess what? In how many ways? There's that word again, all. All your ways. Now, I don't like this word at all. This, this, I tried to erase this word, and it just made a mess of the page. What do I have to do? Submit. You know what? I'm going to take it back. God's working on me. I love submitting to my Lord and my Savior because he's a good master. He's the best. I willingly submit. I give him my life. And that's what God's got to keep reminding me. Because I gave him my life. And, and, this is, and, and, he, and my life is playing out. And I say, um, God, I'm not happy. I haven't been to the beach yet. This is what I'm dealing with God. God, I thought, I thought we had a deal. I thought we had a deal. It's August. Time is running out, God. I haven't been to the beach yet. Do you feel sorry for me? <laughs> yeah, I have problems. And here's the embarrassment. We're going to have prayer time when we see real problems. Um, and then I think God reminds me. He's like, hey, um, Pastor Ed, let me uh, check the calendar here. Oh, you gave me your life. Do you want your life back now? And so you can go to the beach on your schedule? Because you can do that. Or you can be about my business and my time. And don't worry, Pastor Ed, I've taken care of you all this time, right? And I'm going to take care of you. But I need you to, again, do some big boy things. And you can do this. You're a big boy now. Okay? And you'll get to the beach. Don't worry. But um, for right now, um, does the farmer get to say, I want to go to the beach? No, the far if the farmer goes to the beach... Stuff doesn't get planted. The, the farmer knows his season of work. He has another time where he doesn't work as hard, but there's a time to plant, and there's a time to harvest. And, and that's the time to work. Now there will be a time for rest, because God gives us a time to rest, right? He's not a, cr a cruel God. He's a good God. All right. So this is our call to unconditional trust, to believe in God even when we don't understand we're going to trust him when things aren't going our way. Oh, I hate that. When your prayers aren't answered with a yes. How many people, don't raise your hands, and I'm not saying this is for me. How many people, if God said yes to your prayers, you'd have married somebody else? Don't raise your hand. Don't even look anywhere. <laughs> just, say, just say, that must be Pastor Ed. But praise God, God didn't say yes to that first girlfriend or whatever, I don't know, you know, but anyway, unanswered prayers, or they were just answered with no, or they were answered with wait. No, I might have something better for you. And he does. 
He's a good God. Um, conditional trust, that's what we want, right? Not what God wants. Um, it says, God, I'll trust you if I understand everything you're doing. Show me the way, and I will walk it once you show me the way. I'll trust you if you meet my demands, in a sense. I know that sounds horrible, but isn't that what I'm saying? I'm saying, God, if you answer my prayers my way, then we got a deal. Um, all of a sudden, it sounds like I made God my little genie. You know, and there's a problem. God's not my genie. God is God, and I am the servant. The servant should never be making God the servant, because that is not a good place to be. Trust says, God, even when things are going my, even when things don't go my way, I will trust in you. And here's really where it comes down to, and, and this is what God's dealing with me. Am I mature enough to accept God's answers, even when I don't like what they are, even when they're not what I was hoping for? Is God still God when I don't get my way? We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. I, I, I know I go on this all the time, but it's the truth. We say every week, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Well, up in earth, up in heaven, I think they don't have any problem with God's will. Well, there was that one time, and God took care of it. Um, but in general, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. And then um, there's Pastor Ed wanting to go to the beach when there's work to be done. Um, God, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Life is not a straight line. Amen. Maybe life's a roller coaster. Twists and turns. Disappointments. Um, things seem out of control. But we get on the roller coaster knowing we're safe, right? It's scary. But you know you're going to get to the end of the ride. You're going to be like, woo-hoo-hoo. Now, some of you hate that. Some of you loved it when you were younger. But that's that amazing life that God has for you. It's going to be scary at times. It's going to be thrilling at times. But God's got you. God's got you. Um, so let's talk this. Let's not have this conditional trust because that's going to lead to disappointment, discouragement, because life doesn't go as planned. Life is unfair, but God is good. Um, even when uh, we're not, uh, when we're worrying and we're frustrated, um, that steals our joy um, and our passion. Um, we want to remember one thing. Um, is God in control? Um, even when there's a, like a war going on and, and terrible things are happening, um, and even when we get medical things from our doctor or we get a notice from our boss or our kids tell us something and we're like, oh, my life's out of control. Let's remember Isaiah 55 Verses 8 and 9. God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than earth, amen, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. God does not ask us to understand him. We cannot. He's infinite, all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present. We are finite. We are human. I believe if we understood God, our brain would explode. It can't contain all that God has. But what does he ask? Can you trust me? That's what I need you to do. I don't need you to understand me. I need you to trust me. So we'll close with um, that maybe this can help. Um, and you've heard this one before too, because we could go on with this and maybe we will. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious. And we are anxious. Sometimes too often. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And guess what? And then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So God's got a plan for us. Um, it's a good plan. It's going to take faith. And we're going to talk more about that too. Um, but uh, in the meantime, um, we have a song about, I was joking earlier about a song, Trusting in God. And uh, love this song.
And uh, we're going to welcome the band to play us. Um, we're going to trust in God. Is he the Almighty? Yes. Okay. If he's the Almighty, can we trust him? trust in God, let's give God a hand clap, a praise clap. Yes, God. It's not easy, but we are going to trust in you. We're seeking you, and you're never going to fail us. Help us, Lord, to remember that. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to take this moment, as it is the first of the month, that we love to come into union with our Lord and Savior. Um, so again, I come to you and I say, the Lord be with you. Let's lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right 
and it's a good, and it's a joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Lord, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with all your people on earth, and you know, with all the people in heaven, and we have many loved ones in heaven, and they're saying it with us, let us join in the unending hymn of praise. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in Christ. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth, thank you, to your church. You delivered us from slavery of sin and death, and you made a new covenant with us by the water and by the Spirit. And on that Passover night, the night that he said I, to his disciples, I couldn't wait to have this time, even though it was his last supper. He said, I couldn't wait to have this meal with you because he was going to take this meal that celebrated freedom from Egypt to use this as a new illustration that we are free from sin. So he took the bread and he gave thanks to his father. And he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, eat this in memory of me. This is my body, which will be broken for you. When the meal was over, he took the cup. And again, he gave thanks to the Father. And he said, this cup is a part of the new covenant, not the old covenant. We have a new covenant, a new covenant that said that this is my blood, which will be poured out for your sins. And because of I will die, my blood will be poured out. The debt, the penalty, the punishment of your sins will be forgiven. This is the new covenant. And every time you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty things that Jesus did, we also offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, on all of us gathered here, whether present here or on home streaming. Anyone watching this, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us. And on these elements, this bread and this juice, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, who have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, and one with each other. Republican and Democrat, conservative and liberal, all people, Lord, that we would be one with you and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in his final victory. And then we have a feast at the heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. We um, are going to share in communion. Um, we're going to have our ushers. Um, they will uh, tell you when to come on up. And again, as they, they get prepared, uh, we just want to remind everyone there's not really a right way or a wrong way. Uh, you can kneel. You can sit in the first pew if that's easier. You can remain where you are and just give us a hands up or uh, catch our attention. We'd love to bring the communion to you. You can receive it in your hand or, or you can just... There's many ways. You, you can take it right away. Uh, traditionally, we all wait to take it together.
But let us not get complicated over the little details. Let us share in communion as we uh, invite you to come forward now.
This is the uh, time in our service where we have an opportunity to, um, Diane already has it, David. <clears throat> we have an opportunity to share with one another any prayer concerns that we might have. And so Diane has the mic. If anybody has any prayer concerns they want to share, just raise your hand and she will bring the mic to you. I had my endoscopy two days ago and um, they found a tear in the wall that goes between my upper and lower, and my heart and stuff in the lower intestines, so they gotta, they got to operate. So it should be easy, I guess, but they found an ulcer too. So at least right now where the pain's coming from, but we can pray that it all goes well and that if the pain stops, I'll be, I'll be in a lot better place. Amen. So uh, yesterday, our family helped uh, Leanne move out of her apartment, and uh, when she brought the truck over, uh, it ran fine until after we loaded it fully, and then uh, apparently tried to turn the engine, and it seized up because there was no oil in it. So I'm just thankful that, uh, you know, she had to go down to 95 to Delaware, and uh, so I'm just thankful that it didn't happen along the way. The tow truck company is supposed to tow it down to the Delaware house. So uh, just prayers that it makes it down there fully loaded. <laughs> and uh, so that should be happening at any time now. Um, also, uh, tomorrow morning uh, Paul, or tomorrow afternoon, Paul has his MRI to check the area that they weren't able to get into to make sure everything's okay. And we're, I'm just praying for good news. And uh, I, I would covet your prayers for that as well. I'll add one. Drew is flying home from Munich on Wednesday. He has been spending two weeks with his bride, so they have enjoyed their time together, but he is flying home on Wednesday, so traveling mercies. Uh, Marion, this is more of a public service announcement. If you go out the side door here, do not use it. There is a bee's nest right by the entrance there, so we're going to block off this door, go down toward a church office, use one of those doors toward that way, so don't use the side entrance out here. Um, Ginny Schmidt contacted me and asked for prayer for her cousin. We had talked about that last week, and she has appraised that Judy was able to get her procedure. She was concerned how long she might have to wait, but it's scheduled for August 12th, and she's asking prayers for her cousin Judy to stay calm and at peace while she waits for this procedure. And also, Vicki had um, given me a prayer concern. They found out that her brother Mark um, who has a disability, is seeing a surgeon on 814, and the doctors are saying they are sure that he has lung cancer. So um, they need to determine, you know, what course to take and what stage, and she's praying that Mark would stay calm because um, apparently he's very scared. Uh, prayers for Lester. Uh, he was doing really well, and the other day he developed a fever and his, his wife said it's un, he usually would not want to run and go in an ambulance. He told her to call the ambulance, and now he's in the hospital. He has a UTI, but he, he was doing so well, but prayers that he's not there long. Any others? I just want to thank Ed. He spoke to me today. I've been very angry and railing against God for answers that you want but don't sure. get. I just ask for prayers to continue for my daughter. <clears throat> she has her MRI the 12th and then meets with the surgeon the 14th and the oncologist the 15th um, for the return of her uh, brain tumor. <clears throat> Thank you. Any others?
asking for prayers for my daughter. Um, she's made some really bad decisions as far as uh, relationships she's in, and the young man got locked up this week for doing some really dumb stuff, and uh, she's not doing very good mentally right now. She's probably at one of the lowest spots she's been at, and can only pray that uh, she'll uh, find solace in the Lord from here, and may a new path be found for her from where she's at. We love her so much, and her uh, her daughter. Let me just pray for them. Any others? All right, let us go before the Lord. Lord God, we thank you for your presence here among us. We thank you that we can put our trust in you, no matter what the circumstances. And Lord, we understand that that is often very difficult for us to do. Lord, I pray that you would give us the strength and the peace to go through the things that we might be dealing with. Lord, we uh, thank you for Sonny um, being able to find news about what his pain is all about, and we thank you that the endoscopy went well, and they discovered what the problem is, and we just ask that you would just give him peace as he anticipates surgery, um, and we just pray that all of that would go well, that he would know that you are in control, and that he soon will be having healing. Lord, we uh, thank you for uh, your protection over Leanne, Lord, she would have had a long trip down um, to Delaware, and that could have been all kinds of problems with the engine happening to seize up. And we just thank you that it happened in their driveway as opposed to on the road. So thank you for your protection for her. And we also lift up Paul to you. We'll be having an MRI, and um, we just pray that the test results would bring good news, that they would, they would not be able to find anything there. And Lord, we lift up Drew to you who will be flying home on Wednesday and we just ask your safety and protection over him as he travels home. And we lift up Lester to you who had developed a fever and is now in the hospital with an infection and so we just pray that his um, infection would be cleared um, quickly. And Lord, we uh, continue to lift up Bobby's daughter to you. Lord, we know that all that she's going through has not been easy and we lift up her parents um, to you first, Lord, and we just pray that they can have peace and just see your hand in all of this. And Lord, we just also pray for all the test results that she's gonna be having and the plan uh, for her life and what to do. And we just pray that you would give the doctors the wisdom and knowledge that they need to know what is best for her. And Lord, continue to surround their daughter um, also with peace and help the, her to just sense your presence and peace in the midst of all of this. And we lift up Kevin's daughter to you and the um, decisions that she's been making. And Lord, we just pray that she would find you and trust you and turn to you for guidance. Your spirit promises us wisdom and guidance and may she discover your spirit in her and the, help her with the decisions that is she is, that is she is making. And we just pray that you would also find peace in knowing you. And Lord, we thank you for um, Chuck being here this morning. And we just pray your continued hand being upon him and his healing. And we lift up Carol and Chuck both to you and ask that you would just continue to provide them with the peace that they need to uh, walk through these times of um, uncertainty. And so, Lord, just surround them um, with your love and your peace. And Lord, we also lift up uh, Judy to you and we pray that you would surround her as well as she anticipates surgery and just give her peace as she uh, waits for that surgery day to um, come up upon her. And Lord, um, just help her to just sense your presence in the midst of all of this. 
And we also lift up Mark to you, and you know him, Lord, and you know him well. And we know that he is scared from the diagnosis that um, he had received. And so we just ask that you would surround him and give him peace and help him to know that you are near him. And I, I just lift up Jack and Vicki to you and ask that you would give them the wisdom that they need to make the right choices and decisions on behalf of Mark. Help them to know that you are there with them and help them to understand all that is going on. Lord, we continue to lift up our church to you and ask that you would guide us and direct us as we desire to um, go out into the com community and, and introduce you to the people in our community. So help us to be open always to those who might be struggling or those who need to know you. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward for the morning offering? Father God, you are such a giving and generous God. Thank you for the ways we have seen you move in our lives. We now give back to you our offering and our service. Use us, Lord, in your ministry and use our finances to serve others. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. There should be a prayer team to my right as we sing our closing song, Yet Not I but through Christ in me.
I think, um, and, and maybe, maybe you're different than I am, but I think one of the hardest things that I struggle with is trusting God, no matter what is going on. And for some reason, today's prayers kind of just hit me. If week after week, we lift up people that we care about and, and love, and we have to trust God no matter what is going on. And I hope you do a better job of that than, than I do. But just none of that can happen except for Christ in us. And that song has always hit me. Um, I think the words are very powerful. And I hope that you remember that Jesus in us is the one who gives us the strength and the courage and better able to trust him in all of our situations. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your son who died on the cross for us. And we are reminded that that truly is such a gift of love that you have given us. And it is the gift that has given us the strength to carry on in this life through the tough things, through the things that hurt and we can't do anything about. But Lord, we thank you that you are always there walking with us and, um, with us and helping us through it. So help us to look to you this week when we are facing difficult situations and remember the hope that you have given us. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week.